Hi, I'm Allie with PotomacBeads.com, and today's Better Beater is going to focus on all those little pieces that you may have sitting around your house. If you're like me, you may have many little components to different pieces of jewelry that you may have one earring made or you may have a bracelet started. Many designs consist of components. All you have to do is add those components together in a different way. This Better Beater is going to give you knowledge and help you to do so. So with all of these different components kind of sitting on the mat here, it should hopefully give you an idea and inspire you to use up these little half pieces. Some of these pieces I only made one of because I was practicing and trying to get the exact look to make a match for a pair of earrings. The other thing I may have just been playing around and designing, I may have some pendants or some earrings that I like better as components or I may want to reuse or revisit because I don't wear them as they are. You can take all of these components, stitch them together, and remake them into something brand new. A lot of these pieces literally are just laying around here um, and laying around my house. I have so many components, I could do so much with them. And looking at this idea and kind of talking with Anna about this Better Beater video, I thought, man, it would look really cool with all of these components together. There's multiple ways that you can take the components and add them together. There's many designs that will call for this component repeated, like the Peacock Rivoli bracelet. It's just the same thing over and over and over again, linking them together. If you have one that's left out or that you don't have linked onto, this is a great way to add it into a fun, fashionable component piece. This looks really boutique-y and unusual and fun, like a collage piece of jewelry using all different beads and all different textures. I really love the idea of this and I'm totally going to make one on my own. I just need to gather up my 12,000 pieces of my different components and I might make several. So I wanted to give this idea and to kind of talk you through how you would actually go about taking all of these different components that may have been used for different YouTube videos that I've done and actually adding them together to make them a whole nother piece of jewelry. Some of them, again, you can stitch together. So one option is actually taking a needle and thread, getting maybe some 15 O seed beads, taking those 15 O seed beads and making links or connection points. So just picking two up at random, I have these two pieces that I'll bring in. It doesn't really matter which ones. And basically what you're gonna do is sew into one of the pieces, look at the pieces and figure out where the best connection point is going to be. And for me, that might be my very end here, doing it on the diamond. If I would have had a stop bead on here, that's an easy way to kind of stop it and keep it from falling off. And when you look at a lot of different designers and things, if you're a member of our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making, some things look so beautiful and so complicated and you think, I could never make that. Once you start dissecting it and taking it apart, it's usually just components like these, whether or not they're lots of little rivolis or chatons or pieces sewn together. And just by adding them, sewing together a couple different beads in that circle, you automatically create that link. These two pieces now are linked together. I can take this thread and needle and reinforce and go back through one more time. I can also go a back around the piece to the next side with a needle and go over to the opposite side sewing through. And if I was sewing through, coming out the other side, you're going to see some thread exposed because I'm not going to bother to actually sew through the whole piece. Just to give an idea, pick another connection point. So if I would have sewed back through that whole thing, picked another connection point, grabbed my next piece that I want to connect. Again, add the three seed beads, pick this next piece, connect it on, use three more seed beads, and just keep going, connecting on the pieces as I go. That's a great way to add a lot of these components together. Don't want to sew them together? I get that. Some components will allow themselves space to add a jump ring or a um, wire guard. You sometimes will have to take some of those components and they may have one wire guard on them. And I know I had one around here somewhere. So this one, for example, has one wire guard on it. You may wanna add a wire guard to the other side. Again, just add a new piece of thread and needle. I did a Better Beater episode earlier um, this year about 
adding thread. You can add thread to projects at any time. That's one of the cool things about bead weaving. So if I wanna add on a wire guard on the other side, that automatically gives me a section to attach a jump ring or a link to actually link these pieces together. So the idea would be that you can link the two wire guards together, you can link with jump rings, and you can again create that whole new piece by linking some of these things together. One of the other options, rather than sewing them together or doing jump rings and wire guards, putting them together, another option is to pick up some fun things like glueable bases and actually glue some of these components in place. So I have a ring here, I would pick up some E6000 glue, take one of these components, even if it has a bale, you can kind of tuck the bale to the bottom and automatically, a little bit of glue, 12 hours cure time later, and I have a really cool ring and a really cool setting on that adjustable ring. I can also take something like this bracelet blank. We have some cuffs that are center line cuffs and have openings, those would work too. And you can choose to whether or not for some of these blanks, you can glue directly onto them. Or in addition, this blank here has holes in it. You can use this to sew through and up and back, gluing on my piece in the different sections with that E6000 glue, or literally sewing some of these pieces into place by going up through the back and sewing down through the bottom. When you're thinking about this, think of it nothing more as complicated as literally sewing on a button. This is another fun use for these links too, is some of the buttons, which you can add as a funkier look with the components. I just happen to have a button sitting here and just to show that you can kind of sew up through and down through in addition to that glue if you want to. So again, there's so many different options when it comes to components. There's so many different pieces that I have laying around that I really, I know I lost one of these earrings. It's sad and I don't feel like making another one. That automatically is gonna become part of that link. I have a whole bag at home of these links and these components as well as them everywhere, all over my bead room, especially here at the Potomac Beads Company headquarters. Um, we kind of have components sitting everywhere that are ideas that we've played with, that we're constructing and that we're working with. So take some of these components, mix them together, either sew them together, um, you can jump bring them together, you can glue them together, and make a fun and funky piece of your own. You've already put all the work in, all you need to do is a couple more minutes for each component, even if you're stitching them together, it doesn't take that long. When you are stitching components together, make sure, as I had showed earlier, reinforce that thread at the connection point because that's gonna be an area where you could hypothetically kind of lose your thread or pull apart that knot. Take the thread ends on both sides back into the piece, and you can even take a little bit of um, super new glue and glue down the knots, in addition to burning down the knots with your thread zap or your thread burner. So some of these different pieces, um, you can search through all of our YouTube videos, the catalog that we have, come up and create some, but I bet you have some at home as well. You can even look in your drawer to some half pieces of jewelry, or like I said, lost earrings, have fun stitching them together and really making that awesome, fun look of the Art Deco kind of connection, that uh, boutique style, getting all of these different beads connected together to make one really fantabulous necklace or bracelet as well. With all of these Better Beater episodes, I know that you have comments and you have ideas that would be great to share, please do so below the video and we'd be happy to answer them. And really they're a resource for other members that are learning to bead or learning to perfect or watching this video to get a little bit better, just like you. It's great to have additional comments that come not just from myself, but also from us as a community. It enhances the art of the jewelry, it enhances creativity, and it also gets it out there to kind of everyone to expand on their knowledge have fun too with all of these different components. And really, like I said, give me a little thumbs up if you like this video. I really can't wait now to put all of these components together. Um, so I'll have to post, if you're a member of our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making, I'll post a picture of all the little components that I sew together and show you the new fantabulous necklace that I'm going to make out of them. So again, whether or not you glue them or you sew them or you do jump rings, you can have fun adding all of these different components together. Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Better Beater. 
Again, hopefully it sparked your imagination and gave you some creative ideas to use up a lot of those different components. Keep in mind that if you want to search any components, need any materials, or want to have fun learning new things, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. In addition to that, if you comment below, you can help others by telling them which components you think look nice together, how you're going to add them together, and what bases or what ways you're going to do that. As well as, if you go to the YouTube channel and subscribe, you'll get regular updates for all these great videos, the Better Beater episodes, and even a list of the different pieces that may be used in this video as well. As always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Better Beater.